I just wanted to give you a real quick overview of classification of matter, and then you're going to spend quite a bit of time looking at some things on your own with, um, with this. I'm hoping this is a lot of review, um, and if not, we can certainly go over some more things when we have some Zoom time later on. So um, um, I've made sort of a little graphic organizer here, and it might not be a bad idea for you to um, maybe take some notes. You can always come back and review the video, though. That's the good thing about online learning. So when we talk about matter, and we will talk a lot about matter because chemistry essentially is the study of, of matter, um, we're going to classify it, classify it in a couple of ways. So there are first two really big divisions. So all matter will fit in, into either the category of pure substances or mixtures. Now, pure substances, one of the things about them is they have definite composition. So we'll talk a little bit more about that when we look at what pure substances are. Mixtures have variable composition. And so that gives you a little bit of an idea of something about how we can, can tell the difference between them. Now, pure substances are further divided into these two sort of categories. They're elements or they're compounds. So let's just kind of focus on this, this side of the um, chart for, for just a bit. So elements cannot be separated into anything simpler. They are the simplest types of substances that there, there are. It's one type of atom that makes up an element. Compounds can be separated from each other chemically. But let's go back to this definite composition idea. If you have a compound like water, it has a definite composition. It's always H2O. If you have a compound like glucose, you may remember that from biology, it's always C6H12O6. It's that 6 to 12 to 6 ratio. It is a, of definite composition. And that's what defines these substances. Now, mixtures, on the other hand, we'll focus on this side of the chart, can have variable composition. If I'm just throwing things together into a mixture, you know, let's say salt and water, I might have a little bit of salt, I might have a whole lot of salt, I might have a medium amount of salt, but it's still a salt water mixture. So that's what I mean by variable composition. So we separate mixtures into two categories further. Um, homogeneous mixtures, or some people say homogeneous mixtures, and heterogeneous mixtures. The difference between these two is just when you look at them, one of them you can tell it's a mixture, the other one you can't. So if it's a homogeneous mixture, it's going to look like a pure substance. You can't see that anything is mixed together. If it's a heterogeneous mixture, hetero means different, you'll be able to see the differences in it. You'll be able to see little specks of things mixed in um, or maybe big chunks of things mixed up together. So let's look at some examples of, of all of these. Get my page centered here again. So examples of elements, sodium, aluminum, chlorine, basically anything that you can find on this periodic table of the elements, which will look at a whole lot more coming up. You know, this is just your complete list of all of the elements that there are. There's nothing that's an element that's not on that table. Compounds are chemical um, combinations of those elements. So since we've put them together by a chemical reaction, we can also separate them by a chemical reaction. Notice elements, we can't separate them. They are as simple as they can be. Um, now, that, that's not to say that there aren't subparts of atoms. Hopefully you've studied that somewhere along the way. You know that atoms have protons, neutrons, and electrons. But those protons, neutrons, and electrons, um, they aren't different from each other. These elements are the simplest things that are still different from each other at, at that particle level. These compounds, again, are just combinations of elements in definite ratios. Now, a little further here. Examples of homogeneous mixtures 
are things that you probably are aware of. They're obvious. Maple syrup, it's basically salt, or salt, sorry, sugar and water. Salt water, um, salt with water. 3% hydrogen peroxide. That's the stuff in the brown bottle that you get at um, CVS or Walgreens. Um, you know, you put it on the cut and it fizzes or bubbles. Um, but that 3% tells me that it's a mixture. It's 97% something else, which is water. Um, but I could also have 30% hydrogen peroxide. Um, if you ever have your hair bleached, it's not 30%. It's like maybe 10% hydrogen peroxide. It's a much stronger mixture than what you could get at the, um, at the drugstore. Brass and 14 karat gold. Those are examples of homogeneous mixtures that are actually solids. Those are alloys. Um, 14 karat gold, it's not pure gold. It's got gold and a little bit of copper, maybe some silver mixed in it um, to make it stronger and to make it a little cheaper. Air is also a, homo a homogeneous mixture most of the time. If you're out west right now where they've got those wildfires, the air is not homogeneous. It looks more heterogeneous. But um, normally we, we consider the air a homogeneous mixture, nitrogen, um, oxygen, carbon dioxide, all those gases mixed together, but you can't see it. You can't tell that it's mixed. For heterogeneous mixtures, things like a tossed salad, if you think about that, lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, you can see all the separate parts. Um, sand at the beach, you, know, you can see little whiter specks, darker specks. It's not one type of particle in there. Marble is a good example of um, a solid that's a heterogeneous mixture. It's got those streaks and swirls in it, even though it's one substance, so that's heterogeneous. And this is one that's kind of tricky, <clears throat> so I wanted to throw it in there. Milk is actually a heterogeneous mixture. And the reason I'm throwing that one in there is to kind of explain what um, chemists think about when we talk about a heterogeneous mixture. If you look at the milk, you can't see different pieces or parts in there. But at the chemical or at the particle level, um, it, is, it is a mixture. The way chemists determine that is they think about it in terms of um, if it's liquid, can it scatter the light? So because you can't see through milk because it looks cloudy, um, it's considered to be a heterogeneous mixture. If you look at it under the microscope, you could see little um, particles in there. You could see if it's not skim milk you know, blobs of fat and different things that are, are in there. So by the chemist's definition, it's not just a matter of what I can see with my naked eye. Um, I would have to look at, you know, whether or not it's clear or cloudy. So clear things are homogenous. Cloudy things have particles that are large enough to scatter light, and those are considered to be heterogeneous. You'll get to read a little bit more about this with... Um, the CK12 that we're going to do. Now, I had to put my particle diagrams on a different sheet because I messed them up. So an element, if I look at the particle level of elements, um, every atom looks the same. Um, they are just, you know, this happens to be a solid, so all of those atoms are the same. If it's a compound, then I've got different types of atoms but they're arranged or they're mixed together in a regular pattern. And so whatever this is, I've got a circle square compound, a circle square compound, and you notice that it's very regular and very arranged. If it's a mixture, and you can't really tell the difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures at the particle level, you'd be looking at different substances. But if I have a mixture, I've got different types of um, substances each particle is, is different. And so that's what we're talking about with the classification of matter. So you're gonna spend, like I said, most of your time today looking at CK12. They've got a lot more detail on all of these different um, ideas. So that is it for today, and I will talk to you guys soon.